Sometime in late 2022, you might have heard me say something like, Hi, I have exciting news. For a long time, our customers have asked us for Wi-Fi. And we have listened. Now I want to take you on a journey of what we have done since then and how we improved our Wi-Fi solution to support you as someone who uses it. The sources and links to the things I talk about here are in the comments if you want to learn more or dive deeper into what's on screen. Early in 2023, we launched our first Wi-Fi product, the NF7002 Wi-Fi 6 Companion IC, one of the first Wi-Fi 6 dual-band devices for the IoT market. With the NF7002, we launched a corresponding development kit. And we also made our Android and iPhone app, the NF Wi-Fi Provisioner, available. It allows for easy Wi-Fi commissioning over Bluetooth LE. We started off with reference example for provisioning, radio test, scan, station, and the Wi-Fi shell sample in our NF Connect SDK. Now, what happened since then? On the hardware side, we expanded our NF70 series of Wi-Fi ICs by two more. The NF7001 is a single-band, cost-efficient version of the NF7002, so it only supports 2.4 GHz. The NF7000 is special. It is made for active and passive scanning of Wi-Fi networks, but also not made to send data, which leads me over to one of my favorite topics, SSID-based Wi-Fi locationing. When you take one of our 91 series cellular SIPs, our NF7000 and NF Cloud, you get an amazing asset tracking solution. Wi-Fi locationing fits so well with cellular and GNSS because it works best exactly where GNSS tends to struggle. You can have a bad GPS signal in high-rise areas or indoors, like here. Luckily, those are exactly the locations where you usually have lots of Wi-Fi networks around. So, if you just need a very rough location, you can determine the device's location based on nearby base stations, so using cellular. That is accurate to one kilometer or two. If you need to have the location more accurate, you can scan for nearby Wi-Fi networks. Sending that information to the NF Cloud usually gets your location within 20 to 30 meters accuracy. This is a bit more power hungry than cell based locationing, but is also a lot more precise and a lot less power hungry than GPS. But obviously, you don't have Wi Fi networks everywhere. In cases where you don't have nearby Wi Fi networks or you need a more precise location, you can use GPS. But this one you probably already know since we made an extra video and a webinar on this specific topic. Links below. In those videos, I also talk about the NF7002 EK, which is uh, an extra evaluation kit made for the NF7002. You can emulate the 7000 and 7001 on this. It's in the form factor of an Arduino shield, so it fits nicely onto our other development kits. For example, you can use it with the 9160 DK. But you can also use it with non-Nordic host devices. One of the first use cases I saw after launching the EK was it being used next to an NXP host running Zephyr. We also made an additional expansion board, this one, uh, that can be used on our Thingy53 prototyping platform to add Wi-Fi to it. And yes, you can use it uh, with Edge Import Studio to directly send your training data to the cloud. We also made this in a way where you can snap off the connector part and use it as a basic module. Which leads me straight to our next achievement. Wi-Fi modules. There are also Wi-Fi modules available using our NF70 series ICs with different host processors. The first supplier with modules available on the market was Funste. Link to that press release also done. And uh, I also link the growing list of Wi-Fi modules from different suppliers in the description. And now to the part where most of the work actually gets done. Let's have a look at what we've done on the software side. The first NF Connect SDK version after launch was the 2.3.0. Here we added uh, MQTT and a Bluetooth coexistence sample. We also added Wi-Fi to most of our meta samples and improved the general Wi-Fi information in our documentation. 2.4 brought more updates and a guide on Wi-Fi certification. This is also the first version with a Wi-Fi certified stack and the version we used to certify our NF7002 development kit. 2.5 added the Network Agnostic Connectivity Manager. 
This allows seamless use of IP-based protocols, regardless of underlying transport. So basically, using Wi-Fi or cellular is handled the same way. In this version, we also majorly enhanced our Wi-Fi scan API, making it a lot more configurable and giving you more control over power consumption. We also added a target wake time sample and a quick track control application that helps you get the Wi-Fi certification, what helps with the certification. This version also includes our Meta Bridge application for the NF7002. It allows the use of non-Meta devices in a Meta fabric by exposing them as Meta endpoint. It basically allows you to use Bluetooth devices as Meta devices. In 2.6, we added even more new samples and memory optimizations. And besides NF Connect SDK, we also released support for NF70 series for Linux operating systems. Uh, that's on our GitHub. You know the deal, links in the description. As you can see, there's a lot happening and we have a loaded pipeline of new features and even more samples and improvements to implement for you. Like NF54 series hosts. Also, if you don't like reading the changelog to get updates or new features, I highly recommend our webinars. We do one shortly after every NF Connect SDK release. There, you will get all the necessary information together with some demos showcasing them. The last thing I want to mention on our first year achievements list is a dedicated course in our Nordic Developer Academy. These are self-paced online learning courses made by our experts for you. By the time of the recording of this video, uh, the course has been out for about four months and we have 700 enrollments and an average rating of 9.3 out of 10. And now let's have a look at the NF70 series in action. Uh, today we're showing off a demo we've been working on recently, which is uh, actually an uh, upgrade of an older demo that we did back when Bluetooth 5 was introduced. Uh, back at that time, we connected this uh, Arducam uh, SPI camera module to one of the NRF52 development kits. And we used that to showcase what kind of throughput you could achieve with Bluetooth 5 or Bluetooth Low Energy uh, with the introduction of this 2 megabit high speed mode. Uh, now we wanted to sort of upgrade this demo, take it to the next level. And we did that by connecting the sensor to one of our uh, 7002 DKs. So this is a new development kit that is uh, combining both the NRF7002 Wi-Fi 6 uh, low-power Wi-Fi chipset and uh, the 5340 sort of state-of-the-art short-range uh, device for Bluetooth and other short-range protocols. And uh, what we wanted to do with this was to try to evaluate what kind of throughput you can achieve over Wi-Fi rather than Bluetooth, but also how you can transmit something over Wi-Fi and Bluetooth at the same time to sort of evaluate uh, the coexisting capabilities between Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So similar to the old demo, we can still connect from the mobile application over Bluetooth. This is more or less unchanged from uh, what we demonstrated before. And I can uh, switch between the one megabit, which was the legacy Bluetooth low energy mode, and the two megabit mode. And then I can evaluate what kind of throughput you can achieve in these uh, different modes. But then we also added a Wi-Fi option to this. So now on the PC here, we have a Wi-Fi client. The laptop is connected to the same Wi-Fi network as the 7002. Uh, this Wi-Fi client is now connected to the demo. And this allows me to sort of duplicate the functionality from the mobile application uh, on the PC side, PC side over Wi-Fi. Then I can start the stream here. Uh, I can set different resolutions. And uh, it's probably hard to see, but I can measure and evaluate the throughput uh, down here and also how many frames per second I achieve. And this can actually run at the same time as the Bluetooth in order to evaluate the coexistence. So if I start the stream here on Bluetooth, I can see that now both of them are running at the same time. And essentially the speed will be limited by the slowest link. So normally the Bluetooth the connection will set the speed and the Wi-Fi connection will be held back to a certain extent by, uh, by the Bluetooth. If I stop the stream here, you can see it speed up or Wi-Fi. Now if I go to the highest um, resolution, that's sort of when you can achieve the highest kind of throughput. I see we see values up to around 4.5 megabit per second over Wi-Fi compared to around 1.2 megabit per second over Bluetooth. Uh, the main limitation here on the, the Wi-Fi side is actually the interface with the camera. So it's limited to 8 uh, megahertz SPI on a single wire. So that means that the maximum throughput is around 8 megabit. But then there's obviously overhead and other factors that detracts from that. So all of this is available now. If you want to have a look at the demo yourself, it's possible to get the Arducam sensors online. Uh, all the code is available on GitHub. 
So if you go on github.com Nordic Playground, uh, you can download uh, this demo. It provides full instructions for setting up the kit and uh, getting all the code running if you want to try this out yourself. As you might have noticed, this is not one of our usual videos. If you like this kind of video, I'd very much appreciate if you give us a like uh, or a thumbs up uh, if you want to stay up to date. I also highly recommend our newsletter. I have the link as the very first link down in the description. There you can select in which topics you're interested, for example, Wi-Fi, and get relevant updates. But you can also subscribe to this YouTube channel and click the bell, because we actually have a new video for most of our major announcements here. And with that, thank you very much for being here and listening. Uh, leave a comment below if you have something to say. And uh, see you next time.